but this thing is really good. We're gonna compare both of them today, but I would have to take first shots right here, and then we'll take them to the table and compare them. And at the end, I'm gonna tell you which one I like the best and why. You may be surprised on my answer. Let's go ahead and take first shots here. With now I've deemed the Shield Plus the best carry gun in 2022 and beyond, but there's one I'm gonna show you today that could seriously be better than this gun, and it may be better than this gun. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna tell you which one of these guns I like the best and why. We're gonna compare and contrast them. I'm gonna take you to the range with them, show you all the features, what makes them different, and what makes them so freaking good. And then I'm gonna put out a separate poll after this video and ask y'all which one I should carry. Whichever gun wins from that poll, that's the one I'm gonna carry. The only reason I'm doing this is because I trust both of these guns and they are both incredible, man. So I'm gonna get them on the table. Let's talk about some of the features. Let me show you some of that stuff. Let's hit the range. Then at the end of the video, I'll tell you which one I personally like the best. But again, you get to choose the gun that I'm gonna carry. Let's go ahead and get right into it. Now, if you happen to guess, Oh, sorry, wrong video. That one's coming up though. Now, if you guessed the Spectre Comp, fantastic gun, but you're wrong. If you guessed the Glock 43, you're definitely wrong. If you guessed the CR920, you're wrong. If you guessed the Hellcat Pro, you're still wrong. Maybe you guessed the X Macro. God, great gun, but you're wrong. The gun I'm referring to, the Smith & Wesson Equalizer. So the Equalizer and Shield Plus, let's go ahead and look at the specs and features that make these two guns very unique from one another. So if we line them up slide to slide, you can see that the Equalizer is longer. You can see it looks to be a little bit thicker and not including the optic, of course, they, uh, the equalizer is a little bit longer as far as the weight. Now, I finally got me one of these fancy scales and we're gonna try out the equalizer. Now, this has the EPS carry on it, so it's going to be a little bit heavier. We're at 1.7 ounces. Shield Plus, 1.4 ounces. So. A little bit of a difference there, but if we were to put an optic on the Shield Plus, they'd be just about the same weight, same capacity, same magazines even. You have the 10 round flush mag, 13 round extended mag, and the equalizer came with this 15 round magazine for the Shield Plus as well. Now you may be thinking, how tall is this in comparison to something like the X Macro? And fortunately, I can answer the question. They are just about the same height. So you have 15 rounds in the MMP, you have 17 in the X macro, and not really counting the looks department, they're just about the same. So that's pretty impressive. Although this obviously looks cleaner because it's made for that 17 round mag. Now, how much does that really matter if I were to need this to save my life? It doesn't matter at all. But at the same time, aesthetics is a part of kind of what we do. It's the smallest part. It's the most insignificant part in a lot of ways, but it's still something. So it looks a little bit goofy, but at the same time, it works. Locks back. It works as expected, and that's what you want. And it's not so long that it just makes it unnecessary compared to some of the other options like the Hellcat Pro and the X Macro. Now, SIG got the sizing right. You can see the Shield Plus behind the Hellcat Pro here. They're both 15 rounds. Shield Plus is a little bit longer there. They just did an astounding job with the X Macro and getting 17 rounds in this gun for the size of grip that we're talking about here. It's pretty dang impressive, actually. And just for reference, the X Macro is in the front. The Equalizer with the 15 round mag is in the back. There's just a hair difference between the two. So what about the other differences? Let's look at the equalizer first. You can see the slide serrations and how they're cut. They have them really wide. So you can see the design right there. And this gun is designed to be easy to rack, easy to shoot, easy to carry. So it's designed to be easy all the way around because it does retain those easy features. As you can see right there, there's your slide stop. It actually comes with a Picatinny rail 
as opposed to no rail on the Shield Plus. You could do a light and a laser, but it's a little bit more complicated on the Shield Plus than it is going to be on the Equalizer. And you can see the fish scale style serrations they've used for a long time. They come up just a little ways on the slide in the front and in the back right here. This gun is significantly harder to charge up when you compare it to something like the EZ or the Equalizer. The biggest difference being between the two is the triggers. Because you have an internal hammer on the equalizer, you have a striker fired gun in the Shield Plus. And the biggest downfall I thought was going to be on the equalizer is the trigger. I, I just, I assumed similar to the EZ, it's not going to be as good as it could be because of that trigger, and I was wrong. I like that 15 round mag, by the way, y'all. Hitting just to the left of that four target, man, that thing is a pain. Penis target. <laughs> there we go. Screw that four target, I'm good. I missed a few shots there. All right, let's bust out the shield plus. All right, 13 round mag. Got it. All right, penis target, you're going down, sucker. Oh my God, hold on, hold on. I ain't going out like that, hold up. Now some of those targets kicked my butt a little bit. I don't know if I was at 100%, you know, shooting capabilities that day. Even then you see what these guns are capable of if you do your part. So, the trigger on the Shield Plus. Flat face, get to the wall, it breaks. Reset, boom. It's not super light, it's predictable. That is what I want in a carry gun. The equalizer, you have the grip safety, okay? It's passive. I don't think it's necessary. Smith & Wesson does, right? And their engineers are smarter than I am. So they put it on there. Again, it's passive. I just, I don't care for it, you know. But the trigger, you get to the wall, very short take up. It breaks. It's not the best trigger in the world. I don't even think it's as good as the Shield Plus. Reset. But, the range results speak for themselves. It doesn't have to be the best trigger in the world to be an amazing shooting gun, and that's what you're looking at in the equalizer. Yeah, this needs a little bit of an adjustment upwards, printing a little bit low. All right, did a little bit of an adjustment up, so let's see where we're at now. Not too bad at all, dude. Very nice. Now what about the way these guns feel in the hand and the way they carry? Both guns are incredible. When it comes to guns that could be your best first gun, if you want something that you could carry,
these two I put at the top of the list. There's others on there that I, that I would say are good options, but these two are amongst the best because they have a good feel, they have a solid feel in the hand, you can get a little bit longer magazine to get a fuller grip. Look at the 13 round mag, boom. So you have a gun that can inspire confidence, that can be easily carried once you swap the mags out, and something that you can actually add an optic on for possibly an easier time to teach somebody. You know, it's easier for them to show them, hey, put the dot on the target, pull the trigger. You know what I mean? So you have a lot of amazing features here that make it very suitable to a first time gun owner, first time shooter, and something that could be carried as well. That's a pretty hard balance to strike and they've done that with the equalizer. But the Shield Plus is no slouch in that department either. It's got a good feel in the hand. Neither one of them have adjustable back straps or anything like that. Not a huge deal for me. They both fit my hand pretty well. I have smaller hands, but whatever. Um, I haven't heard many people complain about that aspect of it. I'm sure there's some, but uh, you have a decent set of sights. Now you can go with the Performance Center Shield Plus, which will give you the option to put the optic on there. They even have a non-performance center Shield Plus, I'm fairly certain, that is optics ready as well. Point being, you have the option to do the same thing on this gun that you have on the equalizer as well, minus, of course, the, the Picatinny rail. So the battery of arms on both of these guns is different, but they're both really good. What about the way they carry? This is another area where it's kind of too close to call. You look at them, they're about the same size, they're about the same weight, they use the same mags. I mean, I mean, when you look at them, the equalizer is a little bit longer. Maybe this one isn't as good for appendix carry. I carry between the three and four o'clock position, so it doesn't affect me as much. This one's also a little bit heavier. So I know Miss Heckshot, when she tries to carry something like this inside the waistband, it's a little bit too much for her. When she does it outside the waistband or open carry, she can get away with it, obviously. At that point, it doesn't really matter. So I guess it just depends on you and your body type. I wanted to bring Miss Heckshots into this because she has to be a little bit more uh, aware because she wears tighter clothing and all that kind of stuff as well. And I, I believe that this is just a little bit too big for her to carry inside the waistband. Me personally, I don't have an issue with either gun carrying them at all. You know, they're both super comfortable. You got a little bit more weight than something like a P365, obviously bigger than your Micro 9s, Micro 380s, but you have two guns that I personally would trust over almost anything else on the market with my capabilities and being able to protect myself. One of these two guns, if I can't have a full size gun, one of these two guns is the one I want in my holster. That is, of course, if I can't have the Spectre Comp because this one's really good too. I mean, really good. So <laughs> it, it becomes harder the more you kind of add to your collection and all of that kind of stuff. But these two are amongst the best. And there's really no clear winner for me until I look at consistency over time. That's about the only metric I have to use to say I like the Shield Plus over the Equalizer. Now, I know where the Shield Plus prints, but let's do one mag right here. gun is such an awesome shooter now time for my revenge on that target yeah how you like that it only took me 20 rounds or so Now can I hit it again? How 
How about that? Shield plus equalizer. If you're the judge of this just from the way I'm shooting it, make sure you leave a comment down below. Which one would you pick just from the shots that you've seen? Let's go back to the table and I'm gonna give you my opinion. Tell me which one you think is the best as of right now in the video. Let's, uh, let's keep going here. Got a few more things to talk about. The aesthetics, I mean, I think this is a better looking gun. Again, how much does that matter? Well, everybody kind of says that doesn't matter, <laughs> but at the same time, we all know that high points are ugly as sin. And so that's not something you show off to your friends, right? If you walk in and, you know, you're, you're, you're talking to your friends about your Spectre Comp or your Shield Plus Performance Center, you're proud of that gun. You're proud of it because it looks good. It's got to function well and all that kind of stuff. And yes, I agree with that. But aesthetic-wise, the Shield Plus looks better. It's a little simpler. And sometimes simpler is better. In this case... I think if they just remove this goofy grip safety, I love the way this gun looks, minus that. So if we could just cut this portion out right here. <laughs> and again, I'm sure they put it there for some reason. It may make new shooters uh, more comfortable knowing if you don't engage the grip safety, it's not gonna fire. Maybe, I, maybe it's something to do with the internal hammer. Maybe that is, the only way to make it truly drop safe, again, I, I don't really know. I haven't talked to them about that, and they know more than I do. I'm just nitpicking it a little bit because they're so freaking close. What else do I have to go on? Well, that didn't prove the point too well for the equalizer. <laughs> I promise you it shoots better than what I just showed there, though. Penis target. Let's go. All right. <sighs> My goodness. Wow. Every time I bring this thing to the range, I mean, it's always with me at the range, but every time I shoot it or draw up an excuse to shoot it. I'm so impressed. And as soon as I say that, I missed three shots in a row. What's up? Dude, that target, this is not the first time that target has kicked my butt, by the way. Ooh, man, I do not feel good about myself. Well, fortunately we have some more ammo, so let's load this back up. That penis target is going down. Do I trust this gun is gonna work in a year, two years, three years? Yeah, because Smith & Wesson's never let me down, so I have no reason to not believe them. Now, that doesn't mean when I first got this gun, I started carrying it, no. I made sure to shoot it and went through the protocol, assuming it was gonna work, but you still have to shoot your carry guns, you have to, you have to shoot them. Super important. So when it comes down to it, man, both these guns are incredible, dude. Here's some questions that you may want to answer if you're looking at either one of these options, trying to decide because headshot's not giving you a real answer. <laughs> Do you have weaker dexterity in your hands? Do you have arthritis? Are you an older person? Are you a woman that struggles with traditional slides smaller the gun, the harder it is to rack. It's just the way it is. So if you answer any of those questions with yes, I'd say equalizer. If you're a newer shooter, maybe the equalizer is a better option for you. If you got a little bit more experience, you just wanna upgrade, or maybe you're getting your first carry gun, but you've been around guns and you've shot them and, you're, and you have experience, Shield Plus is really hard to beat. And that's about where I am with it. I don't really know. That's why I'm reaching out to y'all to ask y'all, which one do you want me to carry? Which one do you think I should carry? 
And that's the one that I'm gonna start carrying. Because again, I trust both of them. If I had to blindly pick one, I'd probably go with the Shield Plus because I, I just, I know that gun and I've been carrying it so long now. I mean, that's been my carry gun 90% of the time, 95% of the time when I'm not alternating other guns. The other gun that's really taken the place in my waistband this year, probably the most, is the Spectra Comp. But this gun has just been, it's my go-to. So anyways, I'm gonna release a poll after this video drops and y'all answer the poll. Let me know which one do you want me to start carrying and y'all can be the decision makers on that front. Big thanks to you guys, man. If you wanna support what I do, you can do that through Patreon. There's a link down below, $1 a month, one. Makes a huge difference if I can get a lot of people to join up. Love to have you over there, man. Some perks and other things like that to make that a great option for you as well. Big thanks to you guys. See you in the next one. And as always, holding down.